There are discoveries that have changed the world, but turned out to be very harmful to humans' radiation, for example. I tell you how scientists investigated this phenomenon when they knew nothing about it yet. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. By experiment, 0.1 gram of radium from 8 tons of ore. On March 2, 1896, at the Paris Academy of Sciences, the first report on the invisible radiation produced by phosphorescent bodies. The speaker and discoverer was French physicist Henri Becquerel. The future researcher of radioactivity, Marie Curie, was 28 years old at the time. She and all mankind had yet to learn how radiation affects living organisms. 125 years earlier, Henri Becquerel had been influenced by the recent discovery of X-rays and was experimenting with uranium salts to see if luminescence was accompanied by X-rays. The scientist exposed one of the uranium salt compounds, which colorfully phosphoresced green-yellow light, to sunlight, then wrapped it in dark paper and placed it in a cabinet on a photographic plate also wrapped in paper. After developing the plate, an image of a lump of salt appeared. But Becquerel knew that fluorescent radiation does not pass through black paper. So what was this special effect? Something new, namely invisible radiation. The scientist hastened to share his discovery with his acquaintances, a couple of Curie physicists. Maria Sklodowska Curie, a native of the Russian Empire, graduate of the Sorbonne, wife of French physicist Pierre Curie, was just looking for a topic for her dissertation. The acquaintance with Becquerel and his work proved fateful for her, since 1898, Maria and Pierre began their experiments with radiation. Since the university refused to provide them with a laboratory, they did their research in an old barn at the School of Industrial Physics and Chemistry in Paris. I can say without exaggeration that this period was for me and my husband a heroic epoch in our life together," Maria Curie recalled. Often I cook some food immediately so as not to interrupt the course of a particularly important operation. For four years, the Curies persistently tried to figure out whether uranium was radioactive or whether there were other unknown substances. Even the birth of their daughter in September 1897 didn't stop them, they entrusted her to her grandfather's care and continued to toil in the barn, going through various materials and testing them for radioactivity. In one of their experiments, the Curies discovered a mysterious substance that was 400 times more radioactive than pure uranium. In 1898, they discovered and named two radioactive elements, polonium and radium. It sounds simple, but try to imagine. The concentration of radium in uranium tar ore is 4,000 times lower than that of polonium. To isolate 0.1 gram of radium chloride in 1902, the couple had to process 8 tons of nast uranium from the Jochimsthal metallurgical plant, which were delivered to their barn for free with the help of the Austro-Hungarian government and the Vienna Academy of Sciences. Marie Curie, a frail woman, hauled the ore by hand into giant cauldrons and heated portions of 20 kilograms each. Sometimes all day I stirred the boiling mass with an iron kingpin almost as long as I was tall. In the evening I would collapse from fatigue. But just in this trashy barn were the best and happiest years of our lives, devoted entirely to work, Maria Curie recalled. Pictured below is the 1902 Curry family. The roof of the barn was leaking and the room was not heated in winter, but the result was worth it. Maria Curie entered the history of science as the first woman to receive the Nobel Prize and the only woman to receive it twice, in 1903 in physics and in 1911 in chemistry. The Nobel Committee initially wanted to award only Pierre Curie with Henri Becquerel, but the irate scientist husband pointed out the injustice, I would like my work in the research of radioactive bodies to be considered together with the activities of Mrs. Curie. Indeed, it was her work that determined the discovery of new substances, and her contribution to this discovery is enormous, she also determined the atomic weight of radium. Maria Curie received not only world fame and a prize, but also, finally, her own laboratory and, at the same time, a bathroom in her apartment. In 1903, she defended her thesis on the study of radioactive substances. Today, experts call her years of scientific work a time-spanning suicide radiation experienced. 
alarm bells about the dangers of radiation came but were ignored by the Curies. So, in April 1902, Henri Becquerel begged his wife for a substance for a lecture, barium chloride basiel II, and put a sealed glass tube in his vest pocket. He passed six hours this way, and ten days after the conference, he developed a red stain in the spot where the tube had been. When it turned into an ulcer, the scientist shared this accidental discovery with Curie with the words, I love radium very much, but I resent it. The ulcer was treated as an ordinary burn, and although it went away, it left a scar on his body. So the man who discovered radiation also became the first victim of its effects. The case is described in detail in the biographical book about Henri Becquerel. Pierre Curie repeated the experience on himself, he purposely carried a tube of radium and soon discovered the burn. At a dinner in honor of his wife's thesis defense, he showed guests a flask of blowing radium salt and admitted that it hangs in their bedroom instead of a nightlight. Curie liked the unusual effect, if you hold the flask in your hand for 10 minutes, you get a slight burn. Scientists had not yet guessed that radium could be dangerous. In those days it was customary among chemists to taste new substances, and Maria Curie carelessly worked with murderous materials even during pregnancy. Her second child was born early and soon died, the third daughter lived 102 years and was a personal bibliographer of her mother. Pierre Curie had time to understand the dangers of radiation in an experiment on mice before he died under the wheels of a horse-drawn carriage in 1906. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were no protective clothing or special instruments for recording radiation. But medicine was already looking for applications for the discovery of radium. In Russia, Maria Curie personally initiated radiotherapy. In 1903, she met Vladimir Zykov, deputy director of Europe's first cancer clinic, the future Herzen Moscow Research Institute of Oncology. Curie gave Zykov a few milligrams of radium, and it was with them that Russian radiation therapy began, which by and large has not changed since then. In France, this method was called curiotherapy, radium irradiation was used to treat lupus, ringworm, and cancer. The curie as a unit of radioactivity was introduced in 1910 at the International Congress of Radiology and Electricity in Brussels. The first successes in the treatment of tumors through radiation created a general excitement, the public saw radium as a source of eternal life. Radium was advertised as a panacea for all diseases. Foodstuffs, cosmetics and even radium watches were produced. In 1924, in a factory in New Jersey, USA, producing luminous watches, there was an outbreak of radiation sickness among female workers who applied radium paint to the dial and licked the brushes for precise strokes. The girls' teeth fell out, their jaws turned to chaff, ten workers died, and the rest received disability pensions after a trial. Maria Sklodowska Curie herself died of radiation anemia in 1934 at the age of 66, just one year before her eldest daughter and son-in-law were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their synthesis of new radioactive elements. Marie Curie was buried with special precautions. A wooden coffin was placed in a lead coffin and then in a second wooden coffin. When her sarcophagus was moved to the Pantheon in Paris in 1995, they found enormous radiation that was 30 times higher than the background value. More than 100 years later, Marie Curie's belongings are still dangerously radioactive. Her books, diaries, letters have been stored in lead boxes in the National Library in Paris since the late 1960s. The records cannot be touched without protective gear for another 1,500 years, the half-life of radium-226 is about 1,600 years. One of the sheets still has Pierre Curie's radioactive fingerprint. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.